Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we want to talk about southern blotting technique. Redo that. Hi friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we want to talk about southern blotting, southern blotting technique. Okay. So, if you want to know what is southern blotting, how it is done, what are the advantages and disadvantages, this video is just for you. So, continue to watch this video. Okay. So, let us begin to talk about the southern blotting. Okay. If you do not know anything about blotting and what blotting this term blotting is and why it is done, then I will give you a brief idea about it before going into the details of southern blotting. Uh, the idea about the blotting, blotting is a technique it is a DNA probe based technique to find out, to fish out target DNA of interest from a mixture of other, from a mixture of many DNA fragments or DNA uh, components. Okay. So, in blotting technique, we use a probe, as I said, it is a probe based technique that also relies uh, on the resolution technique. Okay. So, to understand blotting, you need to know a very simple concept and the concept of DNA complementarity. Okay. So, let me give you an example. Let us say this is a DNA of your interest, DNA of your interest and that has a sequence let us say this is the DNA sequence. Okay? This is the target DNA sequence, this is what you need to, you want to find out and from a, from a rest of huge chunk of the DNA element, this is huge chunk of the DNA element, but this particular sequence is of your interest, you need this sequence to work with. So, the best way to find out whether this target DNA which is huge contain the sequence of interest is to design a probe that will hybridize this is a probe, okay? a probe that will hybridize to the target region of your DNA. This is the target region of the DNA. So, the probe must be designed complementarity, right? based on complementary, complementary, complementary DNA sequence. And complementary DNA sequence means in this case, if A is present in the DNA target region, then T will be there in the probe. If T is there, then A because A pairs with T, G pairs with C. So, based on that, the probe sequence will be T, A, G, G, A, C. Right? So, to fish out A, T, C, C, T, G, this sequence from the whole bunch of huge DNA fragment and mixture of DNA fragments, you need to design this probe to find it out because your probe is exactly complementary to the target region of the DNA. So, they will pair and due to the hybridization, due to the hybridization, you can easily find out uh, the target region of the DNA. Now, the question is how can you design an experiment, a setup with which utilizing probe, you can fish out a fragment of the DNA or target region of the DNA. So, let us say, as I said, that this, this DNA is huge. Okay, It is not a small region, it is a huge DNA. And this huge DNA that is present here, if you want to find out a portion of this DNA as a target, then we need to break this DNA. Okay? The very first thing is to break that DNA into smaller pieces, because it will be easy to work with the smaller pieces compared to the large one, because this DNA is huge in length. So, the very first step, the very first step is uh, the restriction endonuclease digestion. Okay? And we use restriction endonuclease to cleave this DNA in targeted locations first, fragmentize it and then this fragment forms a fragment mix. Okay? So, mix of DNA fragments, mix of DNA fragments are generated after RE digestion. After that, what we need to do, second thing is we need to separate, we need to separate DNA fragments from each other, we need to separate DNA fragments of each other. right? So, in order to separate the DNA fragment, what technique we need to use? If you recall what technique is used for DNA fragment uh, separation, gel electrophoresis, right? So, we will have wells, uh, one will be this ladder sequence and then there will be the sample. This is where we put the sample and once you put the sample, it will 
it will form a particular pattern from this gel once the pattern is formed okay because there there will be multiple fragments are present there so we'll get different kinds of band in the gel so that's how the third step comes in and remember the third step resolution that sep second step resolution or separation of dna fragment using gel sorry gel electrophoresis and once the separation is done then the third important part is the probing probing and this probing associated process will be known as blotting so blotting is the big picture big name under which probing is only one kind of one part of the effect so in blotting what we mean by blotting in simple terms what is blotting generally we give you a paper and there is a liquid let's say water and put the paper in water the paper start to soak the water that's what we call it as a blot or blotting paper so blotting means the idea where uh, we utilize a paper uh, and we put the paper on top of uh, here in this case on top of uh, this gel electrophoresis or this gel after the gel electrophoresis so that not only the water in this case buffer transfers but also the print that is present in the gel electrophoresis that print also transfers and print transfer means in this case transfer of the dna which is present in the gel okay that is the primary term called blotting and after the transfer of the dna elements from the gel into a paper then what we need to do we need to use the probing method to detect the presence of the target sequence okay so let me tell you the idea so the question is first in the blotting technique what we are doing we are doing the blotting and then we do the probing so in blotting why we need to transfer the picture or this this print as i say print or the dna component from the gel electrophoresis gel from the agarose gel into the paper why we do that because the gel is fragile right we cannot handle the gel always like that a paper is much easy to handle so that is one primary reason crucial reason that we use it and second reason is that we need to do a lot of probing and other stuff uh, and gel cannot be that much of stable and that much of uh, what i can say uh, sturdy to do all this job so we need to transfer the component from the agarose gel into the paper so the paper we use in this case the paper we use what paper we are talking about earlier times the southern blotting uses a uh, nitrocellulose membrane paper nitrocellulose membrane but nowadays they use nylon membrane okay because nylon membrane tend to bind more effectively to the dna okay so very less amount of dna can be attached and associated with the nylon membrane compared to the nitrocellulose membrane so if your target dna sequence after fragmentization is very little still it can be detected using a nylon membrane and not a nitrocellulose membrane that's why nylon membrane is used so what we need to do simply the blotting technique uh, realize any kind of blotting you talk about whether this is southern and northern uh, between these two types uh, of blotting we utilize a similar type of protocol and setup and this similar type of setup means simply we have this uh, let's say th this is where the buffer is present okay and uh, after buffer what we put we put a sponge okay let me write here we put a sponge uh, and then we also put a filter or so of so of some kind okay here a filter of some kind and then we put the gel then we put the gel this is the gel after the electrophoresis is done and then on top of that again another filter in simple filter paper we can use and then afterwards again another sponge another sponge and this is a kind of uh, idea and after on top of which we put a lot of weight this is a simplistic model of how this process can be done the weight is placed on and the buffer is present here okay this is the, this is where the buffer uh, what i can say the separation or, or or transfer buffer we can say transfer buffer which is present here so the weight is applied now the reason behind it is that simply you, you think about it that this is uh, sorry this is the nitrocellulose membrane the position of nitrocellulose membrane it will let me draw here 
the red color is the in this case nylon membrane not nitrocellulose but nylon membrane here so you can see the sponge filter paper the then the gel then nylon membrane then again the filter paper then again the sponge then the weight so the the primary thing is that there should be a gel and on top of which there should be the nylon paper okay and we should know the orientation of the gel and paper properly right which is head which is tail like that and we apply some pressure the reason uh, to do that is that we want uh, the buffer to move up we want this buffer to move up via capillary capillary effect a capillary force we can say capillary effect is really really important and this is what is used because the buffer moves to the top as the buffer moves to the top uh, the, the buffer move uh, via the gel into the paper and as the buffer is moving buffer also takes the dna component which is present in the gel and make a print or imprint on the paper and transfer those dna into the paper and as i told you that the nylon paper can effectively bind to the dna fragments okay so they remain associated with the dna fragments here okay and there is no other uh, adhesive need to be provided because of the natural negative uh, negative uh, charge nature of the dna backbone the dna can be easily attached to the nylon paper so once the attachment is done that is that means the blotting this is called the blotting step the blotting step is done it's performed once the blotting step is over then we come to the probing step so the blotting step comes first then comes the probing step in the probing step now what will happen in the probing step is that in probing step now we'll see that once the transfer is done we'll we'll separate everything we'll take the paper because now there is a imprint of the same pattern that was present in the agarose gel into the nylon paper so now we can use the nylon paper and we can utilize it in further stages because we can discard the gel now we don't need it but generally we don't discard gel because we want to find out that which among this pattern which among this bands actually represent the target region of the dna because once we find it we may need to extract the dna from the gel so we keep the gel aside and we take the paper and now everything we are going to do on uh, in in the surface of the paper so let's say this is the paper and in the paper we'll also see uh, normally as per as per this picture we we'll, we must get a band pattern like this so now what we do is that we have designed the probe earlier how because we know which dna region we are targeting and a complementary to that is our probe that's what we designed so we made the probe already so you use the probe and you know the probe is also linked with any radioactive component for example p32 p32 is commonly used as a radioactive label or tag uh, to the probe so that after the binding of the probe we can detect where the probe has bound so we need to provide some sort of signal either it can be radioactive probe or it can be fluorescent tag any of that both can be done in case of a dna fragment and probe is always a single stranded complementary to the target dna target dna sequence okay so once we we have designed the probe and now we we add the probe okay and we allow the probe to bind and probe will not bind any uh, just randomly any place no it's very specific and targeted towards its target dna sequence so let's say the probe only binds here and not any other places so after the probe has bound we allow the like we put the paper and we just put the probe along with the buffer so we allow them some time to be hybridized and after that we wash it we wash this nylon paper after we wash it then what we are going to see we are going to see the presence of radioactivity or chemiluminescence okay presence of radioactivity or fluorescence that's what we are going to see so after that when we want to see the fluorescence we are going to easily find the fluorescence okay like this so after we develop the film if it's a radioactive it, uh, like if we tag the probe with p32 then we always want the radioactivity okay so we utilize auto radiography technique to find out the radioactivity and to find out the location of the probe while if we use the uh fluorescent tag then we utilize chemiluminescence technique to find out where the fluorescence is coming from and from that we know in this case that this is the band from where the fluorescence was coming or the radioactivity is coming from okay from the auto radiogram if it's a radioactive tag so in that case what we are going to suggest that yes among this list of other uh, dna bands this particular band if i correlate as per this is head this is tail as per the same arrangement this one 
represents this particular DNA fragment. So now we can go back to the original agarose gel and we can cut this fragment out and then we can extract that portion of the DNA to find out the target region of the DNA and we can work with the target region of the DNA. That is the idea of southern blotting. So in very simple terms what we can say southern blotting is used to detect and fish out the target DNA sequence from a mixture of other DNA fragments utilizing a complementary probe. That is what the uh, DNA blotting or southern blotting is all about. Okay? And in southern blotting the probe used is a single stranded DNA. The probe must be tagged somehow with radioactivity or, or radioactive phosphate in this case uh, phosphorus radioactive or we can use the fluorescent dye either of that can be used. And the third thing is that the paper that we use nowadays is nylon paper and and the, and the last thing that I want to talk about this southern blotting technique is that as we know that uh, it is for the DNA detection or presence of the DNA in our body. But southern blotting is outdated now, southern blotting is not being used, it is being replaced heavily by much effective and efficient technique known as RT-PCR, real time PCR. Okay? In real time PCR we can easily detect the presence of DNA fragments even in a very minor part of the DNA fragment in a mixture of sample even faster with less complications with less steps because southern blotting requires much more expertise to handle the gel and do all the stuff manually while the RT-PCR most of the work is done automatically by the, um, by the PCR machine itself and the person only needs to add some reagent into the tube in the reaction mix. So that is how easy it is, that is how easy it is to uh, check the presence of the DNA nowadays with RT-PCR. But still it is a classic technique that is why we always read and prepare and talk about the southern blotting. So southern blotting is a process of detecting DNA fragments while there is a northern blotting that is produced to detect the presence of RNA fragments and there is also western blotting which is used in order to detect the presence of protein in a mixture of other proteins. Although there are other techniques like uh, chromatography and all present there but uh, western blotting on the other hand is effective to detect the protein concentration even in the nanogram level. So that uh, is all about the different blotting techniques and this is all about the southern blotting technique. Okay? So I believe you get to know about the southern blotting technique in details. If you like this video please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more and more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.